This is the cleanest and highest quality site plan that I've ever made and it was so simple to make using Illustrator. Let's get started. So when you import your PDF to Illustrator, the first thing that you need to do is release the mask. Now you can edit it and move things around. Separate this drawing into layers. You select one of the buildings, go to select same, the same stroke weight. And when I click on this button here and then move it to the other layer, it moves those objects into the other layer. I'm going to show you how to create really simple patterns, but of course you can download any of them online. You have to create first of all the object, group everything, and then I can drag it into the swatches panel. It will make a pattern for me, which is so cool. And it's vector, high quality, and you can change the different style and the different spacing. I can delete this now and then go back and I'm gonna select everything pressing Control A and then go into the live paint bucket. To scale the pattern, you'll go into object, scale and make sure that you untick transform objects and that way the scaling will only affect the pattern. So now I could scale it to 12% and I do change it later on so if it looks weird, it's fine. <laughs> Any other elements or anything like that that you want to add to your file, you can download it online. A simple way to do it as well is to find CAD blocks. So I found these boats that work a CAD file and then I just exported it into PDF and then added it back into Illustrator. When you import PDFs into Illustrator, they're just lines. They're not considered as shapes. You can easily clean it up or you can clean it in AutoCAD if you prefer. Now to add a fill to this, you would go to life paint bucket and then you would color everything. A simpler way to do this is to draw a rectangle to cover the whole shape and color it any color that you want and set it back behind the boat. And if I select everything, I can go into shape builder tool. And if I click on alt, I can then select the shapes that I want to delete. And there you go. Now you have a boat. Going back to the pattern that I have on the water, I think that the spacing was a bit too close together and that's why it looked really funny when you zoomed out. But the good thing with Illustrator is that if you click on the swatch again, you can edit it. I'm creating this random dot pattern so that I can use for grass. I honestly love Illustrator so much for this because it's so clean and I feel like I'm doing an adult coloring book. It's just so nice. Of course, I have a lot of surfaces to cover, so this did take some time to add all of my patterns. So if you have a smaller drawing that is a bit more zoomed into your plan and your building, I think it won't take you that long. I also wanted to add some topography lines. This website is really great because it lets you draw your topography lines. It's as realistic as it's going to get for me. And the user interface is really simple. If you scroll down, you can download the SVG file, which is a vector based file. And then you can open that in Illustrator and then you can edit it, change the colors of it, change the line weight. Now, the annoying thing is that there's no scale, so there's no way of getting it exactly like the website unless you take screenshots maybe but for me personally i don't mind it as long as it makes sense scaled it up until it made sense and it fit the site and whenever you're adding elements or drawings make sure that you add it into a new layer that way you can lock it and control it while you are drawing and it doesn't bother you 
so for example I can hide all of these layers now and then I can just focus on the building. Making layers and turning them off while you work is a great way to make Illustrator more smooth and work faster for you. So now comes the annoying part which is adding patterns to the buildings. Now you don't have to add this but it does add such a great quality to the drawings. Now when you add the pattern some objects might not close properly and it's because they're on the edge and there's no lines. So all you have to do is go back in and just add a line and to close that shape, select everything, go into object, path and join. The shortcut for that is control J so I found it really fun to just go around and press control J and see the magic. So this building was quite annoying because of the line weight I couldn't see where it was open. If you have a similar problem, change the light weight to something very small and then you can see if there's any openings or if the shape is not closed properly. With this, I had to use the shape builder tool to make it into a shape because it's made up of different lines and shapes that it didn't work with just join. So now here comes the annoying part, which is to rotate all of the textures to fit the buildings. Now, what you could do is to draw a line in the center or on the edges to see the rotation and then you can rotate it. But because I had a lot of buildings, none of the buildings are on a grid. It does get time consuming. Now again, if you had a smaller plan, more of a grid style, this won't take you so long. But I wanted to save myself some time. So what I did was I went into keyboard shortcuts and I made a shortcut for that command so that it would speed me some time. And it really did help. And you can choose any shortcut that you want and then you can press OK. So now whenever you click it, the window will open up and then you can easily change them. Once you're done with everything, you should have something looking like this, which is fantastic. Now you just need to add some trees. But first, I wanted to get rid of some of those topography lines. The ones that were at the front made more sense than the ones that were to the back, so I just deleted them. Now for a tree, you can use circles, you can download something. So I found this online, which is a vector based tree and make sure that you are happy with the line weight, with the stroke, group it and then go into brushes this time and drag it. And we're going to create a scatter brush. Just press OK for the settings for now. And now you can paint some trees. Click once on the brush. Make sure that this here is all the way to smooth because it reduces the lines that the brush makes and it makes the file more manageable as well. So now when you paint, you get some trees, which is so nice. And make sure you are painting this on a new layer and then you can drag it all the way to the top so that the textures and the patterns, they don't interfere. Now to make these trees more realistic, we're going to go back into brushes and click on it and make this random. Now you can see that there is pressure because this option also works if you had a tablet and you were using your graphic tablet to draw and paint. But I'm just going to select it as random, play with the settings a little bit and then press OK. Now, if you make the spacing and the scatter very random, it's really realistic, but it's very hard to control. So what I did instead was that I just made the scaling random. That way I can control it because I had a lot of roads and I wanted to make sure that they were positioned properly. I kept going on Google Earth to place these trees in the appropriate place. Now, once you have all of your trees, you can go back and edit it as you can see here, which is quite funny to see them all move at the same time. I wanted some that were random and some that were a bit more controlled. So I ended up deleting a few trees and trust me, when you have this method, it's so easy to go overboard with trees. But I'm going to make a new scatter brush and this time this is very random uh, on the areas where the trees are less controlled and just more free. Now the last thing that I want to do to this plan is add a few shadows. So I'm going to add some shadow to this bridge, which is a landmark in that area. And I'm just going to use the pen tool, create that shape and then fill it with black. I'm going to do the same exact thing with buildings, draw the shadows into shapes and fill it with black. Now what you can also do to control it, make sure that it's done properly is that you can copy the 
pattern of the building and then move it to where the shadow would be so that way the distances between all of the vectors or the points would be equal and it would be done properly. Now of course make this into its own layer that way you can edit it or change it or delete it, whatever you want to do afterwards. Now the one thing that was annoying was that the edges, because of the shadow that I was making, it didn't have a stroke. It felt like it wasn't connecting properly to the edge. So what you could do is add a stroke, but then edit the points of it to be rounder. And that way it looks perfect. And this is the final drawing, I'm really happy with it. It's one of the best site plans in terms of graphic quality. It's really simple and it was so easy to make. Honestly, the only thing that took so long for me was the buildings and then it was the boats. It was so annoying to figure out how many I wanted on that canal, honestly. I hope you guys give this site plan a try and if you do, don't forget to share it with me on Instagram. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm Rasha Shururu and I'll see you next time.